In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this super sweet little tea bag wallet. Now, if you're a tea lover, you'll know that we are very particular with our teas and it is nice to have a couple in our handbag so we can use them whenever we need to. And if you've got a tea loving friend, that absolutely love one as a gift and Christmas is coming up. So let me show you how to make one. To make your tea bag wallet, you're going to need two pieces of fabric, one for the outer measuring six inches by seven inches, one for the inner pockets measuring seven inches by 20 inches, a piece of Palon fusible fleece measuring five and a half inches by six and a half inches. You could also use Shape Flex SF101, just whatever you prefer or you've got on hand. Some elastic, mine is a quarter inch wide braided elastic, but again, whatever you've got on hand that you'd like to use and you'll need a button. So the first thing we're going to do is take our inner pocket fabric and face that right sides down. So the wrong side is facing us. And then we're going to take a washable marker or whatever you want to use. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to see it. And then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to start at the top. Now, if you've got directional fabric, make sure we're starting at the top and the direction is coming down this way. And then I'm going to find four inches on my ruler. So you're going to turn it around. Find four inches on my ruler. Line up that four inch mark on the edge of my fabric. Line it up on this edge too of my fabric so that I know it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to do my first ruled line. Then I'm going to measure from the line we just ruled two inches and a quarter. So moving it down to two inches and a quarter, making sure the two inches and a quarter line is on the line. The line on the ruler is on the line I just drew and it's also lined up with the edge of the fabric. Drawing the next line, doing exactly the same but now for three inches and a quarter. Doing the same but now for two inches and a quarter. We've got a pattern going on, I don't know if you've noticed it and I will put these measurements up on the screen right now for you to see. So now two inches and a quarter. Now three inches and a quarter again. And now two inches and a quarter. Okay, now we're going to press that. Now we're going to press and we're going to start with the right side facing us and then I'm just going to fold it back and find my first line. And then at that first line, we want to fold it in half right on the line and press. And we just want to make sure these edges on both sides are also lined up and then that way we know it's nice and straight. So pressing. Then we're going to find our next line and fold it right there. So I'm just going to fold it right over on that line and then again make sure it's lined up nicely and press. Then lift it up again and find my next line. And press. And again, folding on this line. Now I can see it's a bit crooked here. This is poking through, so I want to bring that down. And if both edges are lined up nicely, I know it's nice and straight. And then pressing. Sting it up again and finding my next line. And you get the idea. So I'm just going to carry on pressing. Okay, now we've got our little sleeves there for our tea bags. What I'm going to do next is take my ruler. Now I know that it measures seven inches across, but we want to make a three and a half inch mark line so we can sew down it to divide them both up. So I'll just pop it this way. I'm going to find three and a half inches from my edge here. Also line up the bottom so that I know it's nice and straight. Take my washable marker and just draw a really light line there. Now if you'd like to, you can just pop in a few pins so that our little pleats here or our little pockets don't come undone when we're sewing this next step. Okay. 
Okay, let's sew down that line. So just starting right at the very beginning there, I'm going to sew along the line that I just drew and I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5. I'm going to come right off the very edge. We're not worrying about a back stitch and then we can remove the pins. Now with our outer fabric, let's face that right sides down so the wrong side is facing us and then take our fusible fleece and pop that on top. So we want to face it so that the bumpy side, that's the side with the glue, is facing down and then when we iron it, it mounts and glues to our fabric. So I'm just going to press that on there applying heat and a bit of pressure and what I did was I placed it in the center so I had about the same amount of space around all four sides I'll just turn that over and do it on this side as well so now I've got my fabric facing me how I'd like it to be in my wallet so this is going to be the front side and this is going to be the back when it's folded in half we're just going to measure where we'll put our button and attach our elastic so I'm just going to take a ruler and we on this side on the right hand side we need to measure in one and a half inches in but in the center so we know this is six inches wide so we'll, the middle is three inches so I'll just find one and a half inches on my ruler line that edge of my fabric up with a one and a half inch mark and then I'll just find three inches on my ruler as well so coming down to three inches and making sure that edge is lined up perfectly for one and a half inches I'll just get my fabric marker washable marker and just mark that and that's where we'll put our button and then on this side we just have to measure the halfway mark and you might not be able to see it on my fabric because mine's dark green right there at the halfway mark hmm a little bit of chalk oh no I can see that there we go so I've just marked right on the edge there dead bang in the center and that's where I'll attach my elastic which will come around and then attach to my button okay so I've got my needle and thread here and what I like to do is cut a really long piece well not really long a longish piece then I fold it in half and then I pop the two ends through the eye of the needle and then I have the loop at the bottom there then I'm going to take my button and place it right on top of where I marked it making sure I'm happy with where it's sitting and then I'll attach my button So I'll pull my needle through, but not the thread all the way through. And then I'll just pop my needle through that loop. And it just anchors it in there really nicely. So now I can work and know it's secure. And then I'll just go through about three or four more times. And then on the back there I'll just make a knot and I'll make sure I go through the thread with the knot because if I go through the fleece it might just rip and pull away. Okay, then cutting the thread doesn't have to be too close. And then what we're going to do is take our piece of elastic I've got my piece of elastic here and I cut it at four and a half inches long. Now what we're going to do is fold it in half and I'm going to make sure it's not all twisted. It does create a loop there and then I'm going to place them right next to each other so it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to place it right on top of where I drew that little dot there in my halfway mark. And then we're just going to pin it in place. This is a bit fiddly. So making sure it's about where I did my mark I've got the join I've got the center there right where I have my mark and I'm coming just a little bit over and I'm going to pop my pins in actually this way so I can remove them if I need to when I'm sewing
okay that looks good I want them really butted up next to each other and it's right on top of where I did my dot and if you'd like to check you could check at this point that it is still at the halfway mark then what we're going to do is take our inner and we're going to place that on top so remembering that I've got my button on the right hand side because this is the front of my wallet and then I'm going to take my inner piece with with my pockets and the pockets are here I want them to be coming down so if you can imagine you'd be putting things in your pockets down and then I'm going to place them on top of each other line up all the edges the best I can and then I'll pin them in place now it does look ever so slightly bigger my front piece but I think I'll be okay I'll just pop a few pins in okay so I've pinned that in place put in as many pins as you'd like to you might want to put one at the top there as well just however many you're comfortable with and then I can see where my elastic is because I've got those two pins popping out the side there and then what we want to do is we want to leave an opening at the top because we've got the least amount of bulk there so what I'll do is I will just mark it I'll mark it just past where I did my stitches which is our center stitches maybe half an inch in and then maybe an inch away from the edge here so about a three inch opening so what I'll do is I'll start here go all the way around and then stop here so starting at that mark there I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5 I'm stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance I'm going to go forward a few stitches and then go back I like to do a back stitch when we have to turn our fabric right sides out because it does tend to pull at those stitches and then remove any pins as you need to at the corner I'll do my best guess of a quarter inch seam allowance leave my needle down and turn and then carry on at the next side Okay, so I'm coming up to my elastic. I'm just going to pull those pins out and sew right over the top. And then I will do a back stitch and go right back over them. And then I'll carry on. It's looking a bit puckered, so I'm just going to stop, lift my foot up, smooth it all out, make sure it's sitting nicely, and then carry on. And then I'm just going to stop where we did that second mark and do a back stitch cut my thread so now we're just going to trim the excess off the corner so we want to get as close as we can without getting too close to our stitches so that we don't accidentally cut them or lose the integrity of the corner so I'll just trim all four And now what we're going to do is turn it right sides out so I'm going to find the opening I'm going to grab a corner with my fingers and pull it through gently it's a little bit bulky because of all those layers we did for the pockets so be gentle and then push out all the corners the best you can And then I'll get my point turner or use something similar and just get those corners sitting the best you can. Be, if you've got a point turner or whatever you're using, be careful because you can accidentally poke through the fabric and ruin it. Okay, now let's give it a press. So now we're just going to press it and we're going to make sure our opening is sitting nicely before we press it. We want it to look like it was never there so that's looking nice and straight to me so I'll give that a press and then what we want to do is just come around to all the all the sides and just make sure it's sitting really nicely 
and give it a press. Be careful of your button, especially if it's plastic. Okay, get the whole piece of iron. Now what we're going to do is just do our top stitch around the whole edge, which is decorative, but also closes our opening. So I'll just pop a pin in there so that I know it's all sitting nicely. And then let's do that. So now I'm going to start right before my opening, and I know where that is because I popped my pin in there. I'm going to stitch at stitch length 3 because it's nice and long and decorative, but it will also close our opening. Now I am using my left compensating foot, which is a special foot for the Juki TL machines. It just has a special ledge here that I can butt my little tea bag wallet up against and get a really nice stitch close to the edge if you don't have that. Then just use whatever foot you use to get your best 1 8 of an inch seam allowance for our top stitch here. So I'm not going to do a back stitch and I'm just going to stitch around the entire edge. Oh, I didn't go far enough so I'll just do one more stitch. I'm actually going to make my stitch a little bit smaller just to get to that edge there. Bring it back to three and now turn was perfect we are going through a few layers here so just take your time now I'm coming up to where I started so I'm just going to go over where I started and do a back stitch and I'll Cut my thread and trim any loose threads that we have as close as you can to the stitches without accidentally cutting them. So there's our little tea bag wallet. Isn't that just super cute? Now someone who loves tea will absolutely adore this. So what I'm going to do is fill mine with tea bags before I gift it to someone. And my friend loves Earl Grey, so that's what I'll be popping in there for her. And it fits six tea bags perfectly. And I know that she does carry her tea with her. But now she's got this super cute little wallet that I've made just for her. So I hope you liked this project. And if you did, please hit the like button. It really helps me out. Now, if you're looking for other gift ideas to make, I'll put a link above showing you my top 10 gift ideas for Christmas. Thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next video.